Microsoft Paint. What's left for there to say about the program? I mean, compared to all the art programs out there, even the free ones, MS Paint feels like a relic of the past. You can't add layers, you cannot apply pressure sensitivity, all the brushes are just ugly, you cannot rotate your canvas. These are just some of the problems I and so many others have as for why we do not even consider this as a good program for anything. At least GIMP is great for making thumbnails and making quick edits to your photos. MS Paint just feels like a tool that Bill Gates needed to fill a quota to satisfy die-hard Windows fans that cherish the days of going to computer class and sketching cock and balls with your mates after learning about MS Word for a couple of hours. But then I heard the news. They're not allowed this news, but it is still news. Someone painted the Santa Claus in MS Paint, and isn't this something you may make in Photoshop or Clip Studio Paint? Zaza also did a challenge involving MS Paint, and hey, things went smoothly for him as well for the most part. The end results were beautiful, but it didn't convince me to turn back to MS Paint. These are the works of people who have a lot of creative experience. So it is not because of MS Paint that these artworks exist, but in spite of it. However, in 2022, a huge revamp to MS Paint happened. I didn't hear anything from this, but since I was using a Windows computer, I could escape occasional glimpses of the new paint whenever I opened the start screen. I also noticed that Windows now had something called a 3D viewer that automatically opens whenever I open a STL file. Wondering when Windows created its own program for opening 3D files, I look for answers online. It turns out, Paint finally supports making 3D objects. But that's all I heard from it because by that time, I'm already studying Blender, and once you are in the Blender rabbit hole, there is no going back. Fast forward to now, and I finally, and unfortunately, updated to Windows 11. While this was happening, I was interested in going back to 2D drawing. I found Krita as my main program to use, but then I reflected on the past, how I got to making digital art in the first place. And all that I can remember was this first animation I did involving a stickman reviewing Minecraft maps. I've already told you guys about this early relic of my past multiple times before, but one thing I haven't really told you guys was that this was made using MS Paint. Like reminiscing on an old friend, I asked myself, Dang, how has MS Paint been? By this point, I had experience in both the 2D and 3D medium to make art, animations, web comics, VTubers, GIFs, video essays, and a number of live streams and time lapses documenting the process of making each artwork I made. Surely I might find some stuff inadequate, but as someone who passed through the Blender GUI, I might be able to find creative solutions around MS Paint's problems to make a drawing in this program and maybe find value to what people consider to be the worst of the bunch. And this, this was the start of a long adventure ahead of me. Before I show you guys what I made, I think it's best to recap why MS Paint is in the F tier when it comes to all the drawing and painting programs out there. Because boiling it down to reasons like it is too simple or it doesn't have tools that Photoshop does, does that really scratch why I hated drawing in this program during the duration of my time with it? To me, I think the reason why MS Paint sucks is because it fails to do two things that every art program should do to make it worthwhile. Number one, make creating stuff in it as natural as making the same thing in real life. The first point is just straightforward. Assuming you have a pen tablet with you, a drawing program should feel like you are sketching in a sketch pad or painting on a real canvas. We do not normally create lines with no variation in its width or opacity, and colors don't usually come as saturated as they should be. We also do not have to go through numerous settings just to make sure our strokes look right. Sure, we may have to open a list of menus or download a brush pack somewhere to get just what we need. But we need to avoid most of these steps in order to get straight to drawing naturally in a drawing program. Number 2. Giving users the benefit of making things in the computer compared to making stuff IRL. Let's be real guys, reality sucks and what's bad about drawing in an actual paper is that you don't normally have all the tools you need to make your art better like fancy Copic markers, 
rulers, pens with a specific tip to it, or paint brushes that have a specific texture to it. Art programs give you that option via brush packs that sometimes come free with the program or the line tool that not only generates straight lines but curved lines as well. IRL also makes it hard for you to undo mistakes in your art, so that's why programs invented the undo button. But not only that, you can split things into layers, adjust your colors, or add a filter to it. That usually doesn't generate the most natural of looks, but still. MS Paint, by comparison, barely tries to meet this two quota. It is a very simple program, meaning that anyone can just get into it and draw. Also, when going back to the program, I'm surprised that at some point, they actually gave you the option to add layers to your project, but this is where my positive things to say about the program ends. It still does not link to your pen tablet and uses its pressure sensitivity. Its brushes suck, the amount of undo steps there is before it forgets what you did before is less than average, changing the resolution of your canvas via clicking and dragging the corners is pretty jank in my opinion, there's no way to rotate your view, you can't even properly rotate selected areas, scaling up results in these pixelated lines, and you can't even save your works as a project file type. Something I learned the hard way while making this drawing because I had to mostly do this in one session just to make sure my project is still split into separate layers. Yet, I pushed through. After a while, I noticed that while you cannot save your project, you can save your layers into separate PNG files. You can also obscure the ugliness of the brushes by making them as small as possible and increasing the canvas size. I can also just rotate my head to gain a different perspective of what I'm drawing. I may look pretty stupid doing this, but look, I was committed to making a drawing in this program. I wanted the full 2024 experience of painting in MS Paint because if I was to properly critique this, I at least have to take my time using it. Did I have nothing better to do with my time? Yeah. To start off, I used a character trait generator to give me prompts for an original character design. Then I gathered references in Google to use for my project. I opened up both the photo viewer and paint and split the windows perfectly like some kind of blender project. Then after that, it is off to the races.
Well, here's the result of me breaking my back in paint. I think this is the point of the video when I say that I gained a profound look into what MS Paint is in 2024, but really, there isn't. Go use the same art program that you're still using because all there was in this program was grief, depression, and anxiety. If anything, I should be glad that I moved on from this in 2016 because what came afterwards was a spiritual awakening to the improvements that people outside of Microsoft has made in the act of creating digital art. Kim told me that there are better ways to select parts of a drawing and separate them into different layers. Blender told me that we don't have to work in two dimensions and introduced me to a third dimension in making art. Krita told me that brushes can be used to actually add something to your work. The lesson here is that sometimes the solution is not located within what you have at the present moment. You may think that it's somewhere within, but really, it only comes at the price of turning a blind eye to what could be outside. Better things are out there somewhere. And we need to be daring enough to explore uncharted territory in order to find better tools, better working conditions, and better processes for ourselves. Yes, I'm talking to you, Photoshop users. Jump the bandwagon and use Affinity Photo. No, this advice doesn't apply to relationships unless it's abusive, cheater. But that's not to say that my journey ended here. Remember when I said that Paint now has 3D features to its program? That is not true. Because that is available on Paint 2. Wait, they made another MS Paint? Are they fucking nuts? Well, to be fair, this has this, this was made more recently and as a person who makes 3D art as well, this should be this should this should uh, this should not be as bad as people say it is, right?